So let me ask you, uh, we're on sports a little bit, about the Olympics sure. and what's happening over there. Did you catch any of the opening ceremony? And um, yes. did you really enjoy yes. their their tribute to Christianity in the Last Supper? No, I didn't. <laughs> No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I, I I played it on my podcast yesterday. I played their explanation. They said that, you know, it, they weren't trying to emulate the Last Supper and they made some kind of explanation for that or what have you. Yeah. But I saw what Speaker Mike Johnson said. I saw what others have said. And you know what? Re religion is a very, very powerful thing. There's no question about that. And, and as I've been taught over the years, a lot of times people go to the polls and, you know, it's their one salient issue in their mind and that determines what they how they're going to vote and who they're going to vote for and when you mess with folks religion in any way perceived or literal or otherwise it could potentially be a price to pay i think that there's about you know 2.4 2.6 billion christians in this world um and in this country obviously uh, you know a vast majority of american citizens consider themselves Christians. And you just never know how that's going to affect. I, I spoke to several people that were highly offended because they were watching the opening ceremony with their kids and they didn't see that coming and they didn't anticipate that. And they were very, very put off with that. I didn't understand why it was necessary at the Olympics or what have you, but they do what they do. And that's just the way it goes. What can you say? Mm, it's where the, where the, greatest group for offense because they know we won't riot in the streets. We're not going to kill anybody if you insult Jesus, uh, like we see, if you even draw the prophet Muhammad. And it's just, it's gone too far. I'm sick of it too. You want to watch the opening ceremonies? Like you're, that, it's supposed to be something that brings us together, Stephen A., right? It's like yeah. the Olympics, the reason you watch is to have that few moments of like, yeah, we're all together, sports and the athletes. And they completely ruined it. And they made a lot of families not want to watch it at all, which is an insult to the athletes. Yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree um, because that's a, a lot of people were calling me and saying that very, very same thing. Family members, friends and what have you. You'd be surprised so many times in this country uh, in particular, you know, we're divided on a lot of different things. But there are some things that we come together on and a lot of us are unified in terms of our thinking. And when you watch the opening ceremonies, you didn't anticipate seeing that. And so when you saw that, you knew that a lot of people were going to have a problem with it. I certainly understood where they were coming from. Okay, I want to talk about men performing in the Olympic Games in the women's categories. The International Olympic Committee, committee not known for its like courage, um, decided to leave this issue to the individual sports to decide mm -hmm. whether it would be okay or not. And in mm -hmm. boxing, in boxing, they're allowing it, okay? So now you've got two, I don't know how to describe these people, to be honest with you. All I know is they reportedly have XY chromosomes which in my book is a man. I don't know if they're intersex, you know, or whatever. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. They're, they have XY mm -hmm. chromosomes and they have high testosterone. And right. both were disqualified at the 2023 World Championships for, quote, failing gender eligib eligibility tests. Um, but however, they're going to participate in Paris. One is from Algeria, Emain Khalif. And one is from mm -hmm. Taiwan, Lin Ya Tang, Yu Tang. And this Imain Khalif, this person boxed against a Mexican opponent, Brianda Tamara, back in December of 2022. It was posted on X. There's a little bit of the video here. Um, and just, my God, beat the hell out of this woman. And she said, the female opponent said, you know, during this fight, I felt very out of my reach. This person's blows against me hurt me a lot. I don't think I've ever felt this way in my 13 years as a boxer, not in my sparring uh, with anyone, including men. And thank God I got mm -hmm. out of the ring safely. It's good that I, I did. Is this right? Is this fair? Should this be allowed? I don't think it should be. I've been on the record stating that on many, many occasions. And again, I'm a centrist who leans left. I'm a fiscal conservative. I'm fiscal with my dollars. OK, make no mistake about it. But I'm so I'm socially liberal for the most part. But there are lines that get crossed. And when you talk about women competing against men, uh, particularly in a sport like boxing, it becomes incredibly, incredibly alarming. I remember there was a swimmer and it's swimming, obviously. So that's different. And that's a nonviolent sport. But I think there was a, I forget his name. I apologize. It's my it's my lane. But I forgot his name. There we go. There we go. And you're 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 like 400th in the world. 
you know, amongst men. And and then obviously you you had, the, you know, the gender transformation and you're number one. I mean, it's like you, you're just saying this, you know, th- th- at least ask the question in our society. We pride ourselves on fairness. We certainly want to be as fair to, to ladies as we possibly can. We're ultra sensitive to it. You can bring up Title IX. You can bring up issues of domestic violence and other things. And we're pointing out about the iniquities that have transpired against women on so many levels. OK. And then we have that heightened level of sensitivity. And then it comes to something like this. And we're not being sensitive to the fact that you're having ladies compete against individuals who biologically were men and obviously uh, had a gender transformation. And so, you know, a lot of times it's difficult to speak on that because then doctors and scientists and others get involved. And in the world we're living in, you, Megan, you know this better than me, probably. I can't tell you how many times I would I would have a position and somebody will call up and say, hey, you don't understand. And then they're giving me a whole bunch of explanations as to why it is the case and what have you. And I'm like, OK, you know, listen, live and let live. I get that. But when you're talking about a sport like boxing, where somebody's going to be getting beaten up by somebody that they're in the ring with that was, you know, born uh, uh, of an opposite sex. And then now they're in the ring and, uh, against one another. What do we say about that? How do you how do you how do you speak on that? I don't know the answer to that question. I just know everything about it. Everything about that feels wrong. And I can't yes. deny that. But that's the world that we're living in. And it goes back and forth, back and forth. Now, years ago, you couldn't even say that. Couldn't even say that. Mm-hmm. But now it's got to a point where people are, are more open minded about the debate uh, that it entails. And so what I do is I try to lean towards, OK, what do the experts say? What do they tell us? But then I'm a parent, too. And so right. I know that I would want front, you have to be I, careful because they're so right. rabid. The trans activists are just rabid on shutting well, out it's any not just honest that. discussion. It's not just that. It's that some of the experts ain't really experts. You know what I'm saying? That's I mean, they, they got yeah. partisan, you know, they, they've got partisan agendas. And so you mm-hmm. find that out as well. You know, we, we, we're we not just trusting their expertise. We're trusting their neutrality. We're trusting that you're giving us just the bare bones. What's the truth? And then you find out there are agendas attached mm-hmm. to it, which is why it, it, it becomes so difficult, which is why people like yourself and so many people, both the right and the left, anybody that's bringing the heat and bringing attention to what the truth really is, is something that I embrace because it edifies all of us. Because the reality is a lot of times we just don't know. A lot of us just don't know. You can do your homework. You And, and in this day and age that we're living in, you can have the facts. And two sides have two different versions of the same facts. And it drives folks crazy because you're like, mm-hmm. what? What are you talking you gotta about? You got to find who you think but is an honest broker deal. and listen to that. If you are tired of the same old coffee from those mega corporations pushing their woke agendas and who isn't, listen up. It's time to take a stand and support a brand that embodies American values. At Blackout Coffee, they stand with hardworking Americans who believe in family, faith, and freedom. They roast some of the most incredible coffee you will ever taste using only premium grade beans. And guess what? They roast and ship within 48 hours to ensure you get the freshest coffee possible. You could start your day with a bold cup of blackout coffee. Plus, it's not just coffee, it's a statement. Why settle for less? Make the switch to blackout coffee today by heading over to blackoutcoffee.com slash MK or use the code MK for 20% off your first order. Why support these woke coffee companies? Go to blackoutcoffee.com slash MK and the code is MK. Join the movement, taste the difference. Remember, with every sip, you are supporting a brand that stands for America. Be awake, not woke. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.